Good afternoon, everybody. What is going on? I am Jeff Grant Media. In today's video, we are going to be going through the ever-evolving, ever-growing Flint and Tinder Wax Trucker lineup. Now, before I forget to say this, because I always do, I am five foot nine, roughly 175 to 180 pounds, and every one of the jackets I am wearing will be a size medium. Now, all but one of these jackets Huckberry did send me for free. The jacket I did pay for is the one that started this partnership with Huckberry, which would be the flannel lined waxed trucker jacket. So, the way I'm going to organize this video is I am going to go from the lightest to warmest jacket. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to go ahead and tell you which jacket is my favorite because it might not be the one that you think it's going to be. So stay tuned to the end. If you want to take a guess on uh, what jacket it's going to be before we get there, drop a comment down below with your time code, with your guess, and then we'll see at the very end if you were right. So we're going to start at the beginning with the Flint and Tinder Unlined Wax Trucker Jacket. The Unlined Wax Trucker comes in at $228 USD. It is American made from a seven ounce Martexan sailcloth that is manufactured in New Jersey, and then it is cut and sewn in Los Angeles, California. Now the Unlined Wax Trucker does have some cosmetic differences from its flannel lined and wool lined big brothers, namely the double chest pockets, it also has three interior pockets and this more ornate zigzag design that goes down the front of the button flap. Now this is obviously the lightest because this has absolutely no liner. It is a seven ounce sailcloth and that is it. Now I have worn this jacket in I would say probably the like 70s to like 90 degree temperature range. Now normally I would not wear a jacket when it's 90 degrees but I wore this on the scooter riding the ruckus I would put this on as my riding jacket when it was warmer in the summer and it worked out really really well. Because it is waxed you're not going to breathe nearly as well as you would with a regular cotton shell but when i was moving i had no problems with this and this was a very nice jacket to wear it's actually very nice i like the fit on this quite a bit and it's certainly aged the quickest out of all of the wax jackets that i have tried now the next step up from a completely unlined jacket is going to be the lightest weight lined jacket in the flint and tinder wax jacket lineup and that is going to be the american made waxed mill jacket this jacket comes in at $298 USD. It is American made from an eight ounce British Millerain Teak Wax Evolution 6 fabric. This has a classic Detroit jacket silhouette. It does feature lined pockets, corduroy lined cuffs, a corduroy lined collar, and it has a quilt lined interior. Now, even though this is the lightest line jacket in the Flint and Tinder Wax jacket lineup, it has one of the features that I think several of its heavier weight brothers definitely need, and that is the corduroy lining is on the top of the collar, so when you pop it, you have the nice corduroy touching the back of your neck and not the cold wax canvas when that wind is whipping. That is the wind barrier, and the nice comfortable corduroy is against your neck. Now, there are a few other jackets, which we will get into, that do have some corduroy lining or wool lining, but it's on the other side of the collar where it's, uh, it's not doing necessarily much um, effectiveness for the way the jacket handles, but the mill jacket has that very nice corduroy lined collar on the correct side. So when you flip it, you're going to have a nice comfortable warm cloth against your neck instead of the cold clammy waxed jacket when you're trying to break that cold wind from your neck. So that is an amazing feature that uh, I think a few of the heavier jackets definitely need, as well as the lined hand warmer pockets. It is very nice that I can stick my hand in these pockets and they are corduroy lined both front and back. So I'm not sticking my hands into a cold wax canvas pocket, I am sticking it into a nice warm corduroy lined pocket. Now one very important point of note of the wax mill jacket, it doesn't have that waxed wet feeling that all of the other wax jackets in the Flint and Tenor lineup have. It, uh, it definitely feels dry and it looks kind of shiny. It looks almost like a leather jacket, um, but this is waxed British Millerain. It's just a different type of material. It's their Teak Wax Evolution 6. So it definitely has a drier feeling and it's definitely shiny but it is waxed and it does beat off water well. I have worn this in the rain and it works great. I do like the overall silhouette and cut of this jacket. And again, my favorite feature is that the corduroy is on the top. So when I need to flip that collar to keep my neck warm, I have the nice soft corduroy touching the back of my neck and not the cold wax canvas. Let's move on to the next jacket in the lineup. And that's going to be the very famous, very popular 
flannel line wax trucker jacket. This jacket comes in at $298 USD. It is American made from a seven ounce Martexan sailcloth manufactured in New Jersey and cut and sewn in Los Angeles, California. This jacket is flannel lined throughout the body and the sleeves. And I now have proof that the newer versions do have flannel lining in the knuckle side of the hand warmer pockets where mine is just wax. There's no liner in the pockets. So my pockets are cold when I stick my hands in there, but Huckberry has been listening and they are putting some flannel lining at least on the knuckle side of the newer versions of this jacket. And the flannel line wax trucker has more of a plain front type one style trucker jacket with just a single left breast pocket. Now this was my introductory coat to not only Flint and Tinner to the entire Huckberry house. And um, this is actually not my first one. I bought a charcoal one and I liked it so much that I bought a second one because I had to get the field tan version. I love The Last of Us. That's what finally pushed me over the edge. I'm not gonna lie. I saw the show. Pedro Pascal looked amazing in this jacket. So it pushed me over the edge to finally get one on my own. But I wanted black. It was out of stock. So I got a charcoal one. And then uh, I actually bought this one on eBay. I got this for a steal on eBay. And I ended up wearing the field tan all the time. So I actually, I have sold my uh, charcoal one, but I have every other, almost every other Flint and Tinder wax jacket. So I honestly just had too many jackets. So that's why I sold one of them. But this one, I did still pay for this one with my own money. And I absolutely love this. This one probably has the most wear out of all of the jackets. But then again, this is also my oldest Flint and Tinder jacket out of all of the jackets. So I've owned this one the longest and I absolutely love this. This is, uh, it fits great. One of the things I do love about this jacket is the fact that it is flannel lined in the body and in the sleeves. I absolutely love it. I know a lot of people prefer to have the poly sleeves because it's easier to slide shirts in and out, but I like it. I prefer having the flannel lining the body and the sleeves. Now the next jacket in the lineup is one that I actually do not have. So I had to reach out to a very trusted fellow YouTuber, Patrick, over at Rocky Mountain Styles. And he told me that the brand new Flint and Tinder stretched ripstop waxed field jacket is going to be a little bit warmer than the flannel lined wax trucker. Now the field jacket comes in at $198 USD. It is made in China, which is why the price point is considerably lower. It is made from an eight ounce stretched wax canvas that is 98% cotton and 2% spandex. And it has four ounces of flannel lining in the body and the sleeves. Now the waxed field jacket is an eight ounce canvas as opposed to the seven ounce of the flannel line wax trucker. But Patrick said it also has a longer silhouette to it. So he feels that feature is going to help him stay a little bit warmer in the field jacket as opposed to the flannel line wax trucker. Patrick, thank you for allowing me to use some clips of you and for your vital information in this video. So if you wanna check out Patrick at Rocky Mountain Style, there is a link in the description box down below to both his channel and his video on this field jacket. Now, the next jacket in the lineup is going to be the Flint and Tinder Hudson jacket. The Hudson comes in at $348 USD. It is made in Indonesia from a 10 ounce British Millerane Teak Wax Evolution 8 material. This is flannel lined in the body and the sleeves. It does feature flannel lining in the pockets, but depending upon which pocket you are using, if you are using the standard side belly pockets, you will have the knuckle side line. And if you're using the flap pockets, you will have the palm side line. It also features corduroy lined cuffs and wool lining underneath the collar. Now the Hudson is going to be the classiest jacket, in my opinion, of all of the Flint and Tinder wax jackets. And that's because this silhouette is based on the old English hunting jackets. So this has that kind of old English style and feel to it. Now, the one thing that I do really love is the wool lining that is underneath the collar, but I really wish the wool lining was on the front of the collar. So again, when I flip it up, it would keep my neck warm. It's, it's a very nice touch cosmetically. I like the way it looks, but I would rather have the uh, the warmth on my neck as opposed to underneath being the windbreak and have the wax be the windbreak. One other thing I should also mention is this is also the British Millerain Teak Wax Evolution 8 as opposed to the Evolution 6 of the mill jacket. This has the wet waxy feel to it. And honestly, this jacket, the, the Hudson, has the wettest feeling out of all of the jackets in the Flint and Tinder lineup. Now, all of the other ones are more Texan where the Hudson and the Mill are British Millerain, but the Mill has a very dry, shiny, almost leather look to it, where 
the Hudson is a very wet feeling to it. Now this is the Evolution 8 as opposed to the Evolution 6, uh, but this is definitely has that wax feel to it. So when you're thinking of a wax jacket, this definitely has that feeling to it. This jacket, I like the feel, I like the fit, I like the cut. It's also a little bit longer. So when I'm bending over, I'm not gonna get that gust of wind going up my back. It was very comfortable for me to wear. And it also has the uh, the wool lining as accents on the inside of the jacket, which I really like as an accent. But again, I wish it was more like the mill jacket and the wool was on the front side of the collar. So when I flip it for a windbreak, it was just feeling a little bit more comfortable on my neck. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next jacket in the Flint and Tinder lineup. We're gonna go with the wool lined wax trucker jacket. This jacket comes in at $358 USD. It is American made from eight and a quarter ounce Martex and sailcloth manufactured in New Jersey, cut and sewn in Los Angeles, California. The body of this jacket is wool lined while the sleeves are a poly lined. The wool lined wax trucker does feature fully wool lined hand warmer pockets. And this has the same styling as the flannel lined version. And I can't say having just put this jacket on, having the poly lined sleeves in the flannel lined shirt did make sliding this thing on much easier and much less difficult than trying to situate the Jackson flannel underneath a flannel lining. So it did slide on a lot easier. So I can see why people find it convenient. And yes, if I'm wearing this, I'm most likely going to be wearing a long sleeve shirt with my sleeves down because I wore this in colder temperatures. So I do like having the poly sleeves in the wool line as opposed to the flannel line where I am sometimes wearing either my sleeves rolled up or I had, them on, had it on over a t-shirt or a short sleeve button down shirt. So feeling that on my skin was a lot more cozy than the poly lining. But the poly lining does make putting on the jacket with a flannel shirt a lot easier. But my favorite feature of this jacket is the fact that the pockets are completely flannel lined, which makes putting my hands in these pockets when it's cold out amazing. One of our first Christmas excursions was to a Christmas village and I had this jacket on and it was about 22, 23 degrees. So when my digits got cold from taking pictures, and I put them in those pockets. It was like a nice, warm, welcoming hug when my hands went directly into fully wool lined pockets as opposed to just straight wax canvas. So that is an amazing feature of this jacket. Now, I do also think that maybe the wool line could have used a corduroy lining on the exterior of the collar because it is a little bit heavier. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit like heavier, bulkier looking. So I don't think aesthetically that would have made too much of a difference. Now, I do like the fact that it does look the very the same as the flannel line version but i think the wool line could have maybe used that 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 extra little corduroy on the collar because i did flip the collar of this quite a bit so using that as a windbreak would have been uh pretty pretty uh, nice but the very next jacket and the last one in this lineup is going to be the flannel line quilt waxed rancher jacket it comes in at $398 USD. It is American made from a 10 ounce Martex and sailcloth. The body is a 100% cotton flannel lining and the sleeves are 100% poly lining. This jacket does also feature four ounces of insulation. It also features corduroy lined cuffs and the underside of the collar and it has lined hand warmer pockets. So the Rancher comes in at the heaviest jacket in the Flint and Tinder Wax jacket lineup. It is the heaviest canvas at 10 ounces. It also has a flannel lining and four ounces of insulation that none of the other jackets have. So this is the warmest jacket. It also features a bit of a boxy cut to it so you can layer a lot easier underneath than some of the other jackets. Now, the wool line wax trucker does feel like it's a bit more oversized than the same size medium of the flannel line. So I can definitely fit a mid layer under there, but the rancher has a little bit more room than even the wool line wax trucker. So I can fit a mid layer underneath this and I can still button this up and be comfortable all day long. And this I can wear down into the 20 degree I've worn it below in like the teens with the wind whipping and blowing. This jacket keeps me nice, warm, and toasty. And the only thing that can really make this jacket better would be put this corduroy on the top so when it is 18 degrees outside and the wind is whipping and I need to flip up my collar to keep myself a little warmer, I'd have that nice, soft, warm corduroy against my neck as opposed to it being underneath being the windbreak. So that would be really one of the only things I would change in this jacket. Other than that, this thing is great. It's a bit 
bigger, a little more oversized than some of the other jackets, so I can easily fit a mid layer underneath this. I could throw my Relwin wind zip vest on underneath, and I can button this up and be really, really toasty and comfortable. And that's about what I would wear when it was down that 15, 20 degree uh, temperature range. I could probably even still fit a thin hoodie on underneath if I really wanted to, but I haven't needed to. I've had either the Jackson or like the crossback flannel on with the, the wind zip vest underneath this and I've been completely warm in those very cold temperatures even with the wind whipping. I like the overall fit of it even though it has that little bit of a boxy cut. The jacket still fits and looks really good even if I'm only wearing it over a button down shirt. I don't have to have it completely bulked out and layered underneath for the jacket to fit and not look like it's oversized and sloppy on me. So even though it is a little bit oversized, it still has a good cut and fit to it. But now we have reached the end of the video and have you made a guess about which one of the Flint and Tinder Wax jackets is my favorite? Well, it's the Rancher. I love this jacket. I love the look, I love the cut, I love the feel of this jacket. Now, I will say it's like just a notch, just one tick above the flannel line wax trucker because I absolutely love that jacket as well. I love wearing it and I can wear that a little bit more temperature range. I think that might be a little vers more versatile jacket because I can layer underneath it when it's colder and I can also wear it when it's a little bit warmer out. But there's just something about the Rancher that I just love. I love this jacket. So this is my favorite Flint and Tinder wax jacket. I absolutely love it, can't stop wearing it. And um, if I was to choose one and can only keep one, again, it's really hard, it's a really hard one. If I had to choose between the Rancher and the Flannel Line Wax Trucker, I would probably choose the Rancher just, just because I feel like it's that one tick above. I just really love this jacket. So there you have it, the full lineup of the Flint and Tinder wax jackets, at least as it stands of early 2023. They're ever evolving. And uh, if they, they come out with another jacket, hopefully I can get my paws on it and test it out. And I would like to say thank you again once more time, one more time to Patrick for uh, giving me his insight on where he thought that the waxed fuel jacket would fit in into the rotation. So if you like this video or any of my other videos, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Smash that big red button and ring that bell right next to it so you get notifications the next time I post a brand new video. Good night. Mm -hmm.